I will go ahead and call the uh, JPNL committee meeting to order at 6.33 p.m. Um, and we have one item on the agenda for this evening, which is consider citizen charges and, and complaints. Um, before we get started, I would like to have um, our attorney, Nathan, go through and kind of kick off the conversation and sort of set the parameters for um, in, in relation to the affidavits. I'd be happy to do that. Thank you. Um, did you want me to do that now or are there, is there any preliminary matters that you needed to do as a committee? Um, this is the only item on our agenda for this evening and um, uh, Rebecca had asked that we be really efficient with our time um, because we do have a pretty hefty packet for tonight's meeting. So okay. if you want to start there, that'd be great. And then we can continue the dialogue after that. Great. Um, Thank you. The, the board, I, I had previously distributed a uh, memo to the board. So this um, um, will probably be more for the edification of the citizens that are participating in, in viewing tonight. Um, I think I'll start with an explanation of how we got here. Um, the village has a code section, which is 153.23, which states that any charges against an officer of the village that are in writing and verified by affidavit, which is what we have here, um, must be referred to committee for investigation without debate. So uh, two meetings ago, these were presented. At the last meeting, they were referred to the JPNL committee. And um, so, that, so really the question then is that that's how we got here. So now what is the JPNL committee's duty at this point pursuant to chapter 17 of the Wisconsin statutes and the village code? Um, it's really twofold. Um, as I noted in my memo for the board, um, we're not at the stage yet where we're um, having a full-blown hearing, where we're evaluating, where, where the subcommittee is evaluating facts and um, giving a due process hearing. Um, this is essentially a preliminary step, much like when a criminal defendant appears before a judge in, in, for an initial appearance to determine whether there's probable cause um, to hold somebody over that, that, that something has occurred. If the answer to that is no, the process is finished and it is complete. And if the answer is yes, there's another process that takes place. So the, the, the job of, of this subcommittee is essentially to evaluate whether the allegations, if accepted as true, would they warrant removal for cause of the elected official? And that is pursuant to chapter 17 of the Wisconsin statutes. Cause under chapter 17 is defined, and I quote from the statute as, inefficiency, neglect of duty, official misconduct, or malfeasance in office. Now, um, none of those additional terms are specifically defined in chapter 17. Um, so one of the things we did, we looked at some case law to see if, hey, is there any way we can help the subcommittee do their work? Is there any way that we might be able to help them understand what malfeasance in office is or inefficiency or neglect of duty. Well, there are some cases that um, do discuss those terms, but the problem is um, these terms also come up in cases where um, the recall process is used under Chapter 17. And in those cases, the court has taken a liberal view of the language and said, well, since um, you've gotten all these signatures together and you've got the statutory number of signatures, who are we to judge? Um, who are we to second guess the electorate? That the electorate. So we're going to have a liberal interpretation of those terms when it comes to the, um, the the statutes relating to recall. That's not really what we're doing here, though. I don't think, and I do not believe that the court would take such a liberal interpretation of those terms when we're talking about removal from office for cause under this process. So unfortunately. Um, <laughs> The case law that defines these terms wasn't terribly helpful. So unfortunately, I can't give you tonight as a body, I can't give you a whole lot better definition than provided by the statute, which is again, cause is inefficiency, neglect of duty, official misconduct or malfeasance in office. So um, 
what that that is essentially saying do we what do we have here if these if these items are accepted as true does it rise to that level and the example that i gave in my memorandum is um, just to use a, a of course a, a, um, a sort of an outrageous example to prove the point is if somebody came in and said well you know so and so cut me off in um, didn't use their blinker when we all was driving on Oakland Avenue. Well, that would technically have to be referred to subcommittee if it was submitted via affidavit and verified. And the subcommittee would look at it and go, well, that doesn't meet the definition. They would report back to the board and say, that's, there's, there's really nothing going on here. It doesn't rise to that level and we're done with that process. So, um, so that's, that's why this first step exists. That's why the existing ordinance requires it to be referred to committee. So um, the so the general framework then is to again look look at it in that vacuum. Um, again, there's no fact finding going on at this stage. It's really just a pure question of does it meet the level of inefficiency, neglect of duty, official misconduct, or malfeasance in office? The allegations that are contained in those affidavits. Then um, at the end of that process, you'll report back to the full board and say, you know, we either discussed it. And, and we think um, that it bears further investigation in, in, in the form of a, um, a hearing uh, where due process would be afforded. And there's a process under chapter 17 whereby the um, chief judge of Milwaukee County would have to assign a judge um, to overhear that process. It would be someone totally unassociated with the village. Um, it would be a neutral party. And then there'd be a framework for that. Or uh, alternatively, the board or the subcommittee might say, well, um, you know, there's some uh, serious issues in, alleged here, but they don't rise to that level. We don't feel like it rises to that level. And they can report that back if those are their findings. Um, either way, the citizen complainant, of course, has the right under Chapter 17 to petition directly to the chief judge in Milwaukee County and ask that, a, um, you know, that, that, that process continues. So that that's um, separate from this body's uh, work. So um, I know those are, those are, uh, these are difficult things and um, um, I've appreciated, uh, I know that um, um, all of the board members involved that, uh, you know, uh, are uh, taking their role seriously and, and evaluating this as a, um, something that's important, not only to the citizens of the village, but also the people who have been named in these, that's also, they are entitled to due process and they're entitled to, uh, uh, a fair hearing and and um, I think everyone's approaching it in the right in the right way and I wish the uh, committee the best of luck as they work through this difficult process and I'm uh, um, uh, willing to answer any questions that, that um, people might have otherwise I will turn it back over to the chair uh, trustee carpenter and uh, and uh, uh, for your uh, uh, discretion and um, how, how the, the subcommittee wishes to proceed um, can I ask you <clears throat> one question in regards to the affidavit? So, uh, or two questions. Um, so, Trustee Amenta will recuse herself for the discussion um, regarding Trustee Amenta. However, the um, initial affidavit it includes every trustee in that affidavit. Um, and so, I am not exactly clear on how to proceed with that conversation. Uh, with each of us needing to recuse ourselves from the conversation. That's an excellent point. Um, and we, this is something that I discussed this afternoon with Rebecca as well. Um, on that particular one, because it does implicate the entire board, um, what I would recommend is that the committee report back that um, we have reviewed it and it is up to the discretion of the citizen complainant as to whether to ask the chief judge in Milwaukee County to uh, to move forward on that or not. And as a subcommittee, because each of us are, are, are individually uh, part of that process, um, we have no, you know, we have no report out of committee concerning that. Um, you really, you know, cause you can't take action against yourself. Um, so it's really essentially becomes, um, I, I would put that one last. And, and, and when you report back to the, to the village board, you just, I think you have to tell them the full board that we reviewed it, but because each of our, each of our names are included in this is along with the entire board, um, it would be inappropriate for us to take any formal action one way or another. And we'll follow up with the citizen complainant. And I think the appropriate thing there to do would be to lay out for the citizen complainant 
the process under chapter 17 of the Wisconsin statutes and how she can avail herself if she deems fit um, uh, of the, uh, the the remedies found in chapter 17. So I would focus on the, the other affidavits would be my recommendation. Thank you, Nathan. President Rozak? Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, I just have two quick questions. One is, if it did go to circuit court, who represents the trustees that are uh, named within the affidavit? Is it is it the village attorney? We can't hear anything. I've got to unmute myself. Um, the statute is a little bit vague on the details concerning the problem or the uh, the due process hearing um but it, it does reference the fact that uh the, you know the the official could be represented by counsel um i i don't know that um i i my my suggestion would be let's cross that bridge when we come to it um i don't know that it would be appropriate in my role to represent an individual trustee because my client really is the village as a whole um and uh but but let's I, i'm not trying to punt but um, then, this, I, I'm not aware that I, I did um, um, converse with a number of other municipal attorneys and no one else has gone through this particular process either. Um, and, and the statute is a little vague on some of the details. I did contact the chief judge's office to ask for a meeting with someone there if anything goes forward on logistics and um, and more of the details. And I, I've got a, two calls into the chief judge's office to ask them if they've ever gone through this process. But I think that my, I don't, I don't it, that may be the proverbial cart before the horse because we're not, we're not that far. We're, we're just not that far yet. Thank you. And then just the second quick question for my understanding then today's, today's committee meeting is to assume that the, if these facts were true, would they meet a standard of malfeasance in these definitions. So you're assuming they're true and does it meet a standard? Is that correct? That's basically correct. Yes. And again, um, it's a preliminary step. And if it deems further investigation, then there would absolutely 100% be a due process hearing where everything would be vetted. Um, but we're not, we're not, we're not quite to that step yet. Okay. Thank you so much. I have a quick question. What Nathan, you gave the example of somebody speeding and saying that that would not be um, malfeasance, but um, can you give us some idea of what malfeasance in office or official misconduct? I mean, I know like financial impropriety or conflict of interest. Um, can you give us some in insight into what those terms mean? That's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Right. Um, the neglect, I think the easiest one is probably neglect of duty. Um, let's say that you had someone go AWOL for four or five weeks and um, missed, missed meetings, didn't, um, um, you know, didn't respond and those types of things. I think that's pretty clear um, neglect of duty. Official misconduct, I think you gave an excellent example of, um, of uh, uh, funds, uh, misuse of funds or attempting to unduly influence others with, um, for example, say, um, uh, promoting a, a particular contractor for a, um, um, a particular work for the village that might have, you know, there's a there's a kickback involved or something along those lines, or you know, I think that would be misconduct or malfeasance. Inefficiency, I think, is probably the toughest one to um, is the, probably the toughest one to define, and I wish the statutes had done a, a, a little more a better job of explaining. Um, but I think inefficiency probably is 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 tied closely with neglect of duty, and things such as you know um, missing meetings or or not um, you know uh, preparing uh, properly for uh, presentations for meetings or if there was duties that were were assigned to subcommittees and you know that just again um, not being able to meet the the basic conditions that are required um, for the old, for the for the office itself. I think would, would be a good example. So thank, thank you very much for asking that question. It was an excellent question. Thank you. Okay, so. Um, 
so I'd like to move forward um, with the um, with the first. Sorry. Um, with the so we will move past the what is in the packet as the first affidavit per our attorney's um, guidance and use that for the um, for the save that towards the end. And so we would move on to the second um, affidavit um, regarding um, President Rozek and um, the, it is page 146 in the packet. So um, Trustee Ersink or Trustee Amanda, do you have any comments on that affidavit? I mean, I'm trying to read it to get, you know, what the actual offense is. I mean, there's a lot of explanation of situations, but um, it seems, I guess at, at the top of page 148, President Rosick misused her power and acted out of racial bias to remove this woman from an appointed position without her knowledge and to limit her free speech and that she continued to con attempt to control and discourage this black woman after the rest of us had moved on and thought the matter was resolved. I th um, so, okay, you know, I find this a difficult process to just assume that everything in here is true because I personally know that there are inaccuracies in this one. Um, but if that were true, I guess the question is, uh, that she attempted to remove someone from the HRC. Though, does she admit that this woman wasn't removed from the HRC? She didn't remove the person. So she attempted to remove a person and then tried to limit her free speech without her knowledge. I don't, I, I'm having a hard time making heads or tails out of what the actual accusation is here. Maybe one of you can help me. It sounds like uh, just an abuse of power um, by removing somebody that wasn't um, wasn't wanted on the board. I guess that's kind of how I'm reading it. Uh, whether it be racial or non-racial, uh, it looks like um, President Rozek used her power to remove a board member uh, on this committee or, or from the committee. So I think that that's kind of the you know the gist. And and I you know it's hard to say if it was racially related racially motivated or if it was um, personally motivated. Um, so I, this is a complicated situation. I, you know, I, you know, I would say at that level, um, you know, does, I think the question is, let's, let's, you know, I mean, I know this is, we're talking about race in general here, but let's, you know, the question, let's take the question, is it an abuse of power for President Rozak to remove somebody from a board or commission? Well, she, she, the person wasn't removed, though. The person wasn't removed, no. Okay, so we know for a fact that um, this person stepped down. Is that the, that was the case? She stepped down? Yes. Okay. That's why she says that she acted out of racial bias to attempt. So she's saying that she attempted to remove this person from the HRC. She attempted, but she didn't do it. Okay, do it. yep, yep. So, I, 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 don't, I don't find personally that this rises to official misconduct, malfeasance, neglect of duty, or inefficiency. And Nathan, can you maybe clarify? So our, our role tonight is, does it meet that standard? And then our role is to report back either way to the village board. So for example, in this particular um, affidavit, saying that this is not meeting that standard, we would report back to the village board that for this particular item I'm using as an example, does not meet the standard and then the village board would decide from there, correct? Well, okay, sure. Um, because the ordinance requires it to get reported to the subcommittee, the subcommittee at this point is looking at it and, and that and having that discussion as you just laid it out. However, um, making that decision 
um, is not an endorsement. Um, you know, making that decision is not an endorsement of the conduct one way or the other in any way, shape or form. It's just saying we as a subcommittee looked at it and we either think that it um, meets the statutory definition of cause under 17.001 or we don't. That, that's all you're saying. The, the, the full board can do whatever, it, whatever action, can take whatever action it deems is appropriate based upon that information that's reported at a subcommittee, just as um, when we have a subcommittee report on any other piece of legislation that, you know, we recommend it or we don't recommend it, whatever happens at the full board, whatever is whatever happens. But, um, you know, the board could say, well, we accept, you know, we, we understand that you had a discussion about it and um, we, we trust your judgment. And we as a board don't want to take any more action on it and let's move on with other things. Or it could say, you know, we understood you, you discussed it. And if you think there's cause on this matter, we're going we're gonna to move to direct the village attorney to contact the, um, um, the chief judge's office for Milwaukee County and um, find out more about a, a, a full hearing, a due process hearing. So that I think is really how it would play out after it's reported back to the, to the, to the full board. Does that answer your question? Yes, no, it does. Okay. okay. And it's kind of too bad that we don't have other statements from other parties involved here. We have to just go off of this document, um, you know, which makes the situation even more complicated. You know, it'd be nice to have, you know, uh, the other, the, the member that stepped down, it'd be nice to have her, her comments, uh, you know, as well as some of the other people in this, uh, in this document, but we, we don't have those in front of us. So on surface, you know, we have to take this this article here as as kind of the document that, you know, the only document for this for this you know this topic. So, you know, I you, are there any other you know the other thing I'd like to know is are there any other instances like this in the village where the you know the president may have affected uh, people on committees one way or the other, stepping down from committees or removing people from committees has. Are there any other examples like that? That's something I'd like to know before I kind of move forward with with this, um, with this particular issue, which we don't have in front of us. So, and I don't, I I don't know if th that is relevant to this particular um, affidavit, and I don't know if that's because because it's it would be a different situation. I don't know if it's in able to be included in the conversation. Maybe I'm wrong, Nathan, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you're really, you have what you have in front of you and, um, you know, and the, and the question really is, we've got a citizen, uh, a sworn affidavit, a citizen complaint in front of us and uh, are, the, are the facts alleged in there, do they rise to the, you know, do they rise to the level of defined by the statute? So, um, you know, if, if, if unfortunately, if, if if you ran down into a, um, a factual investigation, then you're really turning it into more of the, the next stage of the process, which is the, um, um, the full due process hearing. So this is just kind of that preliminary stage. Um, so we really, you know, there's unfortunately really no other outside evidence to go on at this point. Yeah, I think with that said, I'd probably not uh, move forward with this particular affidavit, investigating this particular affidavit. Um, so are you saying that you don't think that it meets the standard that Nathan described earlier? I don't think it meets the standard, no. Trustee Amenta? Yeah, I don't either. Okay, My, myself as well. So we would say to, when, when this moves to full board that the three of us do not believe um, that this is um, meets the, the qualifications that Nathan, um, the standards that he put forth in the memo. I, you're muted, Jessica, I can't hear you. Thank you. Sure. Okay, so then the, um, the affidavit What's that? Did, okay. did, do we need to make a motion? Yes, we do need to make a motion. Well, I'll, move, to... 
I'll move that the JPNL committee recommends to the full board that the affid is there a number or somewhere to refer to this the affidavit of Ann McCullough regarding abuse of power on the part of President Rozek does not meet Nathan criteria under section 17 what section should I say Wisconsin state statute 17 I, I believe yeah, Wisconsin state statute 17 um, the, de the definition of cause in Wisconsin uh, statute chapter 17 is that okay the definition of cause as stated in Wisconsin state chapter 17 second that all those in favor aye aye any opposed? Okay, so we will move on to the next affidavit, which is regarding um, trustee Amenta, which is on page 149 of the packet. So this affidavit, um, trustee Amenta will recuse herself from, so it will just be um, trustee Ersink and myself discussing um, the this particular um, affidavit. So, um, this one is in regards to a um, post on Facebook. Um, Trustee Ersink, do you have any thoughts initially on this particular affidavit? You know, I, I just have an overall sort of nebulous there thought about all of this. You know, I will again move, uh, I mean, I will I'll head in the same direction with this topic as I did on the, on the first affidavit. Uh, you know, Shorewood, we, we seem to have, we seem to have a problem with Facebook and social media right now. And, and I think it's, it's leading to a lot of, you know, a lot of division and, you know, we can all do better, myself included. Um, we all need to do better, you know, to bring this village together and to work together. Uh, I think we're all closer to the same page than we are farther apart. And I think, you know, we can get carried away on Facebook. Uh, we can get carried away on social media. And we really need to be more conscious about that. And I, you know, I, I fall, I fall victim to that as well, to be honest with you. So, you know, it's something that we all need to to take in consideration, and we all need to do a better job of, um, trustee Amenta included, you know. But I, I put myself in this in this situation as well. Um, you know, I don't, you know, I, I think, you know, I don't think this warrants a further investigation. But I, I do think it, it, it warrants more personal investigation on how we can how we can do better um, getting our messages out there, how we can be more positive uh, in the community, and, and how we can kind of do a, do a better job to, to serve our community. I, I do think this is a serious. I don't want to take the seriousness away from any of this. You know, I, I do think this is a very serious sort of situation. Um, you know, and and I. And I'd love to hear Trustee Amenta's kind of uh, thoughts on it, even though she's recused herself from this conversation. Uh, I, I do believe that, um, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear more from her, what, what her intention was for the post. And, um, you know, uh, but outside of that, I, I do not think it, it warrants further investigation. I just think we have to, we have to all try to do better. Um, so I would actually agree. Um, I do not believe that it meets the statute um, in chapter 17. Um, I personally feel pretty strongly about social media, um, as well as even Zoom, um, that it has um, made people keyboard warriors and saying things and typing things that you would maybe never say. Um, this is something that a resident said um, and during another Zoom meeting, the same resident was um, flipping off the cameras. Um, and I have to say, personally, this has been a really hard year for me. Um, I really have enjoyed this role, um, but I'm doing the best I can. <clears throat> and um, I hope that residents can see that everyone on this board is doing the best that they can. And whether we're perfect or not, we're all residents. Um, and I hope that we will be able to continue to move forward. Um, so I, um, I'm happy to make a motion that I do believe that the, uh, the affidavit regarding trustee Amenta does not meet the Wisconsin state statute chapter 17 guidelines. <clears throat> I, um, 
And can we just vote since there's only two of us, Sarah? Or do you need a second? Um, if Arthur could just second it, that would be second. Cleaner for the minutes. <laughs> Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I, you know, just can I follow up a comment on after that vote or do we have to move on? You can go ahead. Yeah, I just, you know, I think, you know, everybody from elected officials, we're all doing the best we can from residents to officials. And, um, you know, we're all volunteers here and everybody cares so much about this community. Everybody's very passionate uh, about this community. And that's the beauty of Shorewood. That's why I love representing Shorewood and the people here is because the engagement and, and I value that so much. You don't see that everywhere you go. And, and I, you know, I strongly um, believe that that's our strongest asset here in Shorewood is, is the energy and the passion of our, of our residents. Uh, that, that particular meeting, uh, the, special, the special meeting that we called, that was, you know, people were letting out their frustrations. Residents were frustrated, frustrated us, frustrated, you know, at, you know in the community, frustrated, you know, at the nation. There's a lot of emotions in that meeting and, you know, whether people are flipping off the cameras, yelling, screaming, writing things, I feel like there's a lot of energy that needed to be to get out that night. And I, and I think I don't hold anything against anybody that night for what they did because that needed to happen. It's like one of those therapy, it's like a therapy session we almost had there and people were upset and they were able to just get out, get out there, you know, get that out. And, and I thought, I think that was needed for our village to move forward. You know, sometimes it's, it's not easy and I, and I feel, I feel that was a really positive step, uh, you know, even though a lot of people, you know, disagree with that, I, I think there's a lot of positive that could be taken from that evening and, and, um, you know, uh, so, so I, I think emotions were running high and, and, you know, it's, it's, it's just time to move on, but we're, you know, that's why we're here. We're here to hear from people. We're here to listen to people and we're here to, to govern based on, you know, the needs of our residents. Definitely. Okay. So we have um, two more um, to get through. The next one um, is in um, regards to President Rozek as well. Um, this was in regarding or regarding the um, curfew that was issued on May 30th. So um, I'd like, oh, trust you answer your back. Okay. Um, so um, this one is saying that she failed to perform duties um, and that her, that President Rosick's decisions led to disproportionate risk. Um, so I can open it up to Trustee Ersink or Trustee Menta, um, your thoughts on this particular affidavit. You know, I think this is the, probably the most troubling one for me. Um, I take, I take a lot of issue with this. I was, shocked kind of when this happened and I spent a lot of time you know you know talking to you know people about this issue and um, this is a very troubling situation this is the most troubling one out of all of these and I think this one I you know I'd be a little bit more in favor of, of digging a little deeper into this into this particular topic uh, it did pose a risk um, to our community I think it had the uh, um, you know I I understand President Rozak may have had good intentions, but uh, the way this was handled, the way this went down, was very irresponsible and dangerous for our community. Uh, it went over the heads of our village manager's recommendations as well as the chief of police. And, um, and I feel like, you know, this, you know, this is a very serious, serious allegation. And, um, and I, I, would, I would be in favor of digging deeper into this one. So, you're, you believe that this meets the um, Wisconsin Chapter 17's um, parameters? I mean, I, I personally feel like this is a very serious allegation, whether or not we have to, we, we have to go in front of a judge to figure that out. This is a very, this is just really troubling to me. And I, and I don't know if I have the support of, of we probably won't have the support of both of you on this one as well, but I, I, I'm troubled by this, by this particular incident. And um, I'm not sure, you know, you know, I, I, I'd be open, I'd be open to it. So I'd love to hear from both of you and, and know, hear where you're coming from on this. I mean, I, you know, there's a couple elements to it. I mean, uh, one is, 
um, d does the president um, have uh, the power, the authority to issue a curfew? Um, and she does, right? I mean, and it's, I mean, and it's not, and I, I mean, going over the head of, you know, it's her authority to issue the curfew. Um, and true, um, I don't think the village manager expressed an opinion on it. I think the police chief did say at the one meeting we had that he had not recommended it, but I don't think the village manager, but it, you know, it's not going overhead because it's her, you know, her authority to do it. And she was hearing from the mayor of Glendale who was asking all of the um, surrounding um, municipalities to issue the curfews. So, you know, I, I mean, I guess, so she has the authority to do it. Okay. So the question is, was it like malfeasance or misconduct in that particular situation that night to issue the curfew? Um, I mean, other places did. I think Tosa had a curfew, didn't they? Um, so, and Glendale yeah, certainly. Maybe the, timing, maybe the timing a little bit was, uh, you know, the timing could have, the timing was, was the timing, the timing, I agree, the timing was not ideal. Um, but I mean, again, you know, I, I mean, the timing was not ideal. You know, I, I think it was, I think it was a situation. I mean, I know for a fact that the president has never been in this situation before. I've never been, I don't think any of us had ever been in a situation like this before. And, you know, sometimes, um, it's hard to expect perfection from people in situations where um, there's a lot going on and a lot happening and um, people are scared, you know, and people are, I mean, there are people who were scared about um, uh, the protest coming into Shorewood. There were people who were scared about their kids being out and a curfew being called and them not you know, that their kids were going to get detained. I mean, there were people scared on all sides of this thing. Um, and I guess I would say, you know, um, it, it wasn't the greatest, but I'm not sure, given all that was happening those couple of nights, that, uh, that I would feel comfortable saying this is, you know, the president not performing her duties in office or malfeasance. I, I don't feel that it raises to that level. Yeah, and I, you know, I think, uh, you know, it brings up a better, a bigger conversation about communication and, and who, who was she in communication with and who, you know, who did she talk to that night? Um, she, you know, didn't talk to the public safety chair, which I think would have been a really important conversation to have or would, would have been somebody to call and, and talk to about this. Um, you know, I think the timing of those decisions uh, are really troubling. You know, you're right, does it, you know, how, you know, was it, was, was it a mistake? Maybe, you know, maybe to some, maybe not to others. Um, you know, if she wasn't in this position, if, she, if this is a new position for her, uh, you know, I feel like, you know, she has to make a really tough decision in the moment. I get it. I think it's the nuances of that decision that, that are a little bit more troubling. Uh, just the timing, uh, the, this, the, the, the order of events and, and when she talked to people and when people, you know, that communication happened that's kind of troubling to me but i don't know how far that goes i don't know if this if this goes as far as sitting in front of a judge and and you know digging down into the details i just i personally find it very serious and uh, troubling so I, you know i i don't know where you know but i hear what you're saying you know i think this is a hard one and i don't know if it's worth going in front of a judge to you know to to really investigate to tell you the truth but but it is troubling for me so um. I think, um, in my opinion, this particular one, I don't believe meets um, the chapter 17 guidelines. However, I, I do agree that the timing and the issuing of the curfew without a question that is within the, <coughs> excuse me, the jurisdiction and the authority of the president to do, even if the police chief and the village manager do not think that it is necessary. Um, so that I don't question um, timing. I do have question of 
and I, I do think that we, um, we, in the collective sense of our board and our village manager, um, also learned an important lesson that night that um, that we can't, there, that we are, again, kind of going back to my point that we are all volunteers. We are all, to, to your point, Trustee think we all really care about Shorewood and we want it to be the best place that it can be. situation that we need to move on the next um, the next person on the on the chain which I know we're talking about more later tonight um, so you know I think that this has um, brought to light that we need a, a better process of what comes next uh, or who comes next in that process if we don't hear back from the president and then if we don't hear back from public safety and then and then um, so I think that that also is something that we um, collectively need to take away from this particular situation. Um, so I, mean, I, I agree about the timing because I know when we were going through that period and, you know, we would get texts from Rebecca to say, check your email. And we got a couple of those. And like, by the time I don't always have my phone right next to me. And by the time I got the text, there were several times I got the text and went to look at it and it was too late, you know? So, I mean, I, I, I don't know if there's a misconception among the public that this is a full-time job and that we're like, you know, I mean, it is a lot of time. We have a packet, over 500 page packet tonight. It's a tremendous amount of time that we're doing. Um, but I know I, I am not like, constantly, you know, if I'm at my computer, I may have the trustee email open or I check it a couple times a day, but it's not, I'm not on it like, you know, 20 times a day. I'm not, it's not like a full-time job. Like you're always paying attention to what's going on at the village, you know? Yeah. I think, you know, a part of it is uh, the president should be aware of, uh, of current events and things that are going on. Uh, you know, I would appreciate our president you know, being more in touch with what's happening in Shorewood and, and what's going on, you know, in that, within that day. So, I mean, I was busy, but I, I saw a message on my phone, I saw a message on my computer, and I, and I was looking at the news. So I was, you know, I was really, you know, um, kind of, I, I felt pretty involved in what was going on in the situation, um, you know, and, 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 I, and I'm just saying that I, I, I'd hope that the president would be a little bit more focused on, on what was happening current events wise and within Shorewood. So, and, and if she knew things were happening, you know, she should have her phone next to her. You know, if there's something going on, you know, uh, you know, if, if there's something that's going on that, that could be a very serious situation, I think our phones should be on us at all times. If she has those powers to make those decisions, she should be expecting to make those decisions in a timely fashion. I guess that's kind of what I'm saying. I mean, I think there's some validity to what you're saying, actually. Um, you know, and I, I think if we're ever in that situation again, which I hope we won't ever be, that, um, that we'll, we'll all be able to handle it better. But, um, you know, again, people are human and people learn and they learn by making mistakes. And um, I, yeah, I don't, um, I mean, I, Ms. McCaig is, or McCullough is always free, you know, she doesn't matter, even if we, even if the full, if we say that we don't feel it merits further attention or time by this board, she's free to take this on her own to district court. So, you know, she always has that option. Right. But um, I guess I would move um, to, uh, to that the committee recommends what to, I forget what, not to, what, what was it? That it doesn't meet the guidelines in the Wisconsin's well, Yeah, Wisconsin the, statute. the Wisconsin State Statute 17. 17. Yeah. I would second that. Um, just one second. Are you guys taking public comment? Um, so what I'd like for us to do is to get through, since we only have um, 12 more minutes and we do need to really start um, what I, Rebecca had asked that I be very conscious of the time just based on the size of the packet this evening. So um, 
seeing as though all of our recommendations will be moving to the full board, um, that there will be ample time for public comment at the full board meeting, um, which is, I don't have my calendar in front of me. Do you know the, the date of that? September 8th, I think is the next one. Okay. The Tuesday. Um, so the day after Labor Day? Correct, yep. Okay. yep. Um, so if there's time and we get through the next one, we can take some public comment, but if there's, um, if there's not, then we will allow plenty of time to have public comment before the full board discussion. Sounds great. Anybody on JPNL have any other thoughts on that? Um, you know, I, I just want to put this out there too, as a, you know, as president is also a business owner in Shorewood and the, the threat of looting, you know, also, you know, pay, you know, played a, you know, part in her decision. How does that work as far as being that business owner and thinking of uh, thinking about looting and, and her decision and that decision making process? Does is was she thinking about potentially her business being looted and then calling the curfew? Um, and what you know, what's what's that process? You know, as a business owner and the president making those types of decisions. Would she have to recuse herself from that decision-making process? Because she could just be serving her own business at that point, you know, making sure her own business doesn't get looted. Uh, you know, Nathan, I, um, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I don't know if you have any, or if that um, is. I, I, that would probably not preclude someone from making a, uh, a decision on a, on a curfew um, uh, based upon the conflicts as defined by ordinance in the statute. Um, I, don't, I don't think that that would require a recusal, just, just by virtue of being a, a business owner in the village. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, you, um, could, you could say as a homeowner, you would have the same possibility of True, but I, I think they're eluding businesses. I mean, I think the, the thought was that, that they were going to elude businesses, but I understand. I'm just trying to get clarification on that. So I, um, okay, so I, I made a motion. I worded it very poorly, and Trustee Carpenter helped me with the wording. Um, so we should, should we vote on that? I mean, I'm not opposed. If we have a couple minutes before the uh, full board meeting, I'm not opposed to having public comment. Now. Yeah, we do have the, um, unless, yeah. well, well, let's vote on this and then we have one, the fir the other affidavit that we, Nathan suggested we take at the end. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. We Yeah, but he said we can't do anything on that. Correct, but I just want to make we, sure we all feel good about that, that dialogue before we okay. open to public comment. So, um, all those, Sarah, can you repeat the motion? Basically, uh, you're recommending that it does not meet standards of Chapter 17 of Wisconsin State Statute. Correct. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Um, okay. So then we do need to go back to that first um, affidavit. Uh, it's listed first in the packet. Order. Oh. Point of order. Sorry. Yeah. I had a question for the attorney before the vote. Um, because the person I consulted with is the chair of this committee for the curfew, did she need to recuse herself? I don't, I don't understand what you mean, what, what you mean by consult. I don't, I apologize. I don't exactly. understand the question. Um, I, I just want to protect her because she's the one person that I, did get a board member. I didn't want to make the decision myself. I'm still law. Uh, are you talking about the underlying decision to um, the impose the curfew? Yes. No, I don't. I don't. I don't think that would preclude her from participating in the discussion. Just because you had a conversation mm -hmm. about the steps to proceed. Okay. Okay. No, I, I, I don't, I don't, I, based upon what I understand you to be saying, I don't, I don't think it's an issue. 
Um, um, oh, go ahead. Uh, no, I, I was going to move on. So if you have something else to add. Oh, I was just going to mention on the very last affidavit, um, and this is the one that begins, um, the village board has remained largely silent on the issue of racism. Um, so it, if you look further down, um, it says that in this regard, I am not naming any elected, uh, I think it, I think it means official there. I think it's missing the word official. I'm not naming any elected official to be considered for censure or removal related to this statement. I am asking for a committee to acknowledge that establishing a healthy environment and a fluency around uh, white supremacy is necessary in order to beginning a more authentic work or around authentically engaging EDI work and the pain people of color experience daily. So um, I don't, I don't read this affidavit as seeking dismissal or, or asking the board to take um, to, to basically uh, preclude or eliminate itself um, uh, and remove itself for cause um, under under chapter 17. I think it's more of a, a, a policy statement and, and asking that it, and there's a specific request that it be referred to a different committee and that um, did the board take additional action to educate itself and, and the community. So um, I don't I don't know that there, you would need any formal action on the last affidavit and in, in, in specifically. Okay, um, and I know that the action that was requested in that affidavit has already been, action has already been taken. Um, so, so in essence, there's nothing at this moment that we need to do regarding the last affidavit is what you're saying. Yeah, there's no really no recommendation out of committee to um, um, in regards to a further hearing on it because it specifically says that it's not asking for discipline or censure against any particular. It's just a general complaint uh, uh, and asking the board to take additional action in regards to training, which it, which it, certain, which it has done. So we do have um, a couple of minutes um, tonight to open it up to um, public comment. Um, uh, Clark, um, Sarah, I don't know if you're still on, but um, do you, did anybody, has anybody raised their hand or said that they would like to speak? Yes, Sarah McEnny, um, you're first. So if you'd like to unmute yourself. Sorry, um, before Sarah, the other Sarah goes, um, Rebecca, did you, re I saw your hand raised. Sure, I just wanna, I'm gonna be leaving this meeting now to open up our next meeting. It's 726. And so I just wanna be, cog please be cognizant of your time because we have presenters waiting. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so we'll then um, turn it over to Sarah McEnany. Thank you, Sarah McEnany, uh, 2616 East Jarvis Street. With Sam Coleman now being um, the curriculum director, and will he be guiding the village unlearning racism? And where do you stand in that in regards to moving forward as you just discussed regarding the last affidavit? Um, you know, I know that that has unfolded pretty quickly. Um, with the school district. So I don't know that we have had uh, that dialogue as to how his new um, position changes um, our, our course and our um, uh, plan for that training. So I think that there's more to come on, on that um, in the next few weeks. And um, I would trust that our assistant village manager um, is is working to make sure that that he's still the right individual for that. Um, is it a question of if he's the right individual or if he has availability? I think it's both. I don't, I don't really know, right. to be honest. Yeah, well, I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Um, okay, I think we have time for maybe one more person. Uh, yes, over here. Um, Clerk, um, hang on just a second, Kelly. Um, Clerk Brockman, did you have, is there a line or no? Okay, 
Um, Kelly, if you want to go ahead. Sure. Um, I have a suggestion that when there are things like accusations about anything, I think that looking at certain facts and, and the history of how certain trustees have voted, how they, um, and this kind of aligns with sensitivity training about race relations. For instance, um, you know, who um, reestablished HRC? I mean, that is not a meaningless um, effort. Um, David, it was you, for instance, or who um, opposed bringing debt collectors you know, to um, uh, in our municipal court um, because it would disproportionately punish um, people who um, don't have the wealth. So my recommendation is kind of go back and see what efforts have, in this case, Alice, you know, President Rosek and Trustee Amenta what efforts have they supported? And that's a lot more, there's more meat to that than what was the motivation for the curfew. I mean, we could never know that, although personally, I think it was fear of, you know, of our safety, but that's just my feeling. So instead of all this touchy feely political, you know, uh, dislike of certain people, certain officials, um, really going and seeing what exactly have, have trustees all this time supported. So when there is sensitivity training about minorities and people who are disenfranchised, what have so far have these trustees done? Have they voted for millionaire corporations uh, to get grants and uh, and loans or um, you know or trying to um, help out let's say minority and women owned businesses so that's just a suggestion instead of all this emotional touchy feely stuff of the affidavit um, but to really look at how trustees have voted and what have their efforts really been all these years. So that's... I just want uh, I kind of take offense to uh, lumping people of color and debt collectors and what do, what do those, what do those have to... Oh, have I'm to, just talking about disenfranchised people. Well, are those people Aren't there just color? anybody who's I'm just dis wondering, are those people of color? Because that's, in my mind, that's kind of a racist accusation right there. It's like assuming that people of color or minorities are you know, fearful of debt collectors? I mean, that- that's No, no, a, not at all. But what I'm saying is there's a sensitivity about people who don't have a lot of power. And and um, whether you say it's, it's people of color or people who don't live on Lake Drive and have a lot of money. I mean, it's about the disenfranchised. And I've known uh, David and Allison for years and every effort of theirs is to include people. That has been their, their motive all these years. And this is why I'm so supportive of these women because um, from day one, they have supported people who don't have power and, they've, and they've, they've pushed for transparency. And that has ruffled a lot of feathers and um, going back, you know, five, six, seven years. Um, so. Thank, thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt you. We um, have a very large agenda for the full board meeting um, tonight. So this, that will have to be our last um, comment for the JPNL committee meeting. Do I have, um, we will adjourn, need to log out of this Zoom meeting and then log into the full board um, link. So can, um, do you have a motion to adjourn? I'll move, I'll move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, thank you guys.